2.1 is called The Derivative, an ominous sounding title. This thing should look familiar. Jeez, I hope that looks familiar. Is that familiar to you? Yeah. <laughs> Good, because if it doesn't, you haven't been here the last 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that looks familiar. We've used this for a few things. We've used this to find the instantaneous rate of change. We've used it to find the instantaneous velocity. We've used it to find the slope of a curve at a point. We've used it to find the equation of a tangent line by finding the slope of that curve and then making an equation out of it. So this is, I'll just call it this, because it's, it's what all those things mean. This is the slope of a curve at a point. Slope of curve at a point. This thing, which I've already told you, stands for the slope, right? This thing says as you approach one single point. So this is the slope of a curve, that's f, at a single point. You got the idea? What this idea represents is something called the derivative. So what is the derivative? There you go, my job is done. I've already taught you that. I've taught you a derivative. I just didn't tell you it was a derivative. This thing is a derivative. This idea is a derivative. Well, here's the thing about it, all right? You're going to be taking lots of derivatives, and like I've told you before, people in calculus, they usually they get so involved in doing the computation, they forget what you're actually doing. What are you doing when you're finding a derivative? What are you finding? <laughs> That's what you're doing. What are you doing, everybody? You're finding the slope of the curve. That's what a derivative represents. This thing is the slope of a curve at a point. That's the derivative function. It's telling you how to find the slope of a curve at a point. So we're taking derivatives. That's all we're doing. And there's a special notation for it. Uh, the derivative looks like this. That's the function, right, that we're, we're talking about here. How you say go from a function to a derivative, it's very easy. I'll give you some more notation later on. But you go, okay, this is a function. If that's a function, that's a derivative. The little apostrophe thing. Up at the, it's not a one. It's not a one. And it's uh, like that. Some people have a little dash. It's not a one. The derivative of a function, that's what this says, the derivative of a function, or the slope of this function at any point that I want, is the limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient we've already talked about. And you know what? In general, we're not going to have a specific point. So I'm going to erase the x sub 0. I'm going to say we're not going to do this at a specific point anymore. I'll, we'll, maybe we'll do that later. What we care about is the derivative function. We want the equation, like we did here. We want the equation for the slope of the curve at a point. You with me on that? We're going to stop doing this for a specific point. We might plug in some afterwards. But I want the function itself. Because what you found out in the last example over here was if I told you to plug in more than one point, that gets pretty cumbersome and tedious, right? You have to do it for every single point. That sucks. We want to find out this thing, the function, and then be able to plug in any amount of time or any x value that I want. That's better. So I'm going to leave off the x sub 0 signifying a specific fixed point. I'm going to say just find me the general function for the derivative, the derivative function. And that's that. This is the derivative of f with respect to x. The derivative of f with respect to x says the derivative of that function named f, uh, taking x as our variable. <clears throat> also, you can say this uh, as prime, like optimus prime, very <laughs> cool, uh, but f prime. So this would be like the. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> math or it doesn't matter. Uh, f prime. F prime of x. Say that with me. Yeah, f prime of x. That means the derivative of, that, of uh, f with respect to x. So f prime of x. How do you say that? 
Let's see, we got time for a couple examples. Would you like to see a couple more on how to do these derivatives? Now we'll, we get to call them derivatives. They do imply that it is a, a instantaneous rate of change, an instantaneous velocity if you're dealing with a position curve, the slope of the curve at the point if you're just dealing with a, a basic old function. You want to see some examples? Let's do this thing. <coughs> Okay, so I want you and me, I want us to find the derivative of this function. Oops, oh, that would be way, no, we'll do this, squared. Find the derivative of this function, and then I want you to find the equation of the tangent line to that function at a certain point. Hint, hint, that's a great test question. That's code word for, that's most likely going to be on your test. So, <laughs> pretty close. Yeah. I'm not very original, Scott, so. <laughs> I figure you can do it or you can't, just show me. Uh, anyway, the derivative of that function, and then find the equation of tangent line. So first thing I want to do, I want you to find f prime of x. Now, this is nothing new. Because all this is, is the limit f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And I've showed you several times on how to do that, yeah? I showed you that I need you to label out f of x plus h and label out f of x. And if you can do those things and you can substitute them into those expressions and you can work the algebra, this actually works itself. Not too bad. The calculus is very easy. The algebra, you just have to manipulate it. Uh, tell me. What is f of x in this case? Everybody, what is it? Yes, that's f of, it, f of x. Now I need you to be able to find f of x plus h. x plus h. That means x plus h should show up in parentheses in your problem. Tell me what it is. 2, okay, I like the 2. Then what? Yeah? Definitely parentheses. And do I have a minus 3 or not? Yeah. Let's stop right there. Real quick pause. Make sure you're okay. Are you okay on getting the f of x and the x, f of x plus h in our graph? No? Yes? Let's try this again. If you're a no, then don't raise your hand. If you're a yes, then raise your hand. Are you okay on getting these two things? Good. That's how I check. Okay, over here? Okay, cool. Let's take those expressions, plug them in. So instead of f of x plus h, I've got 2 x plus h squared minus 3 minus, here's my f of x plus h, I've already got that. Now I want to subtract f of x, which is 2 x squared minus 3. Tell me the gigantic flaw that I have on my board right now. Very good. Yeah, that's got to be there because that's going to change your sign. You're subtracting that entire f of x. That's that whole expression. So we'll keep on going here. We're going to distribute. We'll get 2. x plus h squared is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3, minus 2x squared plus 3. You see where the plus 3 is coming from? Just distributing that negative out there, that's going to give us that plus 3, all over h. A couple more steps. Well, we still got to distribute that 2. So we'll get our 2x squared plus 4x 
h plus 2h squared minus 3 minus 2x squared plus 3 all over h. Now, I know it looks nasty, but is this really hard to do? Not really, it's mostly just algebra. It's mostly combining like terms and distribution, just keeping your signs correct. At this point, they're not even hard limits. Shoot, I've given you some really hard limits in this class, haven't I? Trig functions, all sorts of crap like that. This is easy compared to those. This, you just got to factor stuff, and that's not bad at all. So we got a limit as h goes to 0. If I combine all the stuff, a lot of things should and must cross out. And otherwise, basically, here, here's the point. If you don't cross out everything with an h, everything that doesn't have an h in it, <coughs> it's not going to work out for you. Because you're going to have to factor this h out at some point, or be able to work with it in some way. So the x squareds are gone. The threes are gone. I get 4xh plus 2h squared. all over h. If we continue, of course you'll notice I'm still writing the limit because we haven't taken the limit yet. When we factor out the h, we get 4x plus 2h all over h. Tell me what happens now. This is the good part. This is what we wanted to have happen. Can you insert that h equals 0? Yeah, we let h go to 0. That means this term goes to 0 as well. That means we still get a 4x. Feel okay with that one? Here's what it says. What you've just done, you've found the derivative. So if f of x equals 2x squared minus 3, f prime of x, that's the first derivative, the first derivative of f with respect to x is 4x. Okay, what did you just find? The slope, the slope of what curve? Slope of the tangent line. Slope of tangent line, sure, at some point. Slope of which curve? This curve. Does this change for other curves? Yes, the derivative is different for every curve. What you found is the slope of f, the slope of this curve at, well, which point? Any point. Now here's the second part of this question. Find the equation of the tangent line to f of x at 2, 5. What two things do you need to make the equation of a line? Do you have a point? Points have to be given to you. Do you have a slope? Kind of. You have a formula for the slope, right? You have a formula for the slope. Here's your slope. And here's your point. How do you find your slope? Okay, I definitely need point slope formula. Okay, great. Y minus Y1 equals M X minus X1. Okay, great. Uh, what is my Y1? I need more participation than this. What's my X1? Two, two, two. So would you agree I'm going to do y minus 5 equals x minus 2? Would you agree with that? The question is, and this is what I asked you originally, what goes there? Some people would give me a number, some people would give me 4x. Listen, if I want the equation of a tangent line, I want the equation of a tangent line specific to this point. If you put 4x in here, 